and we're back now in today's video we're gonna be putting on our professor hat and we're gonna be grading NBA players I was strolling through Instagram and I saw this post right here and it got me inspired to do something similar so in today's video we're gonna be grading NBA players based off scoring ability shooting ability playmaking defense and team value how important are you to the team now and how important are you for the team's future okay so the way we're gonna do this we got a stack of NBA cards here about 50 about 50 so in here we have NBA stars we have NBA role players we have NBA bench warmers so that's we're gonna get a nice little combination of all of them I'm gonna draw a card and we gonna rate that NBA player now if you like the idea of this video be sure to leave it a like but let's get into number one after we get done shuffling it up two one the guy up top okay I can I can dig it it's Draymond Green Draymond Green is a good one to start off with because he is an all-star without being superior on the offensive side of the ball. So scoring ability for Draymond Green, I gotta give it like a C plus. And I think I may be a little bit generous there. I mean, he's not, he's an all-star without having scoring ability, and that's great. But, you know, he's just he's just not really there. You know, he average a good 10 points per game, 11, maybe 12. You know, that's not usually all-star type numbers, but it's what he does other than scoring the ball that makes him good so i'm gonna give him that shooting ability i gotta give it like a c minus man what nba teams do against draymond green which you will see against the houston rockets do tonight is they're gonna let him shoot the ball because he's not great at it but he has have games where he'll hit three four threes and he'd be like man i guess we gotta guard him out there now but notoriously he's not a great three-point shooter but he is a capable three-point shooter all right playmaking well he's probably well he might be the best playmaking power forward in the game right now so i gotta give him like an a minus there he could definitely run some pg i mean he did run pg when steph curry was out he was breaking the ball up he definitely has the vision has the passing ability so i'm giving him that in comparison to the rest of the the forwards in the league defensively well i mean he was a defensive player of the year right giving it an a now you're gonna see in this video we're not gonna get many a pluses all right so i'm giving them an a because a plus mean like you perfect and though Draymond Green is great at defense we know nobody is really perfect at anything so an A you know he be teetering on the A plus but he's an A there and then what was oh importance to the team I think he is one of the most important players in the league for what he does for what he does if he was out with an injury for a significant amount of time you would see a difference in the Golden State Warriors so importance to the team i'm also going to give it like an a minus this is carmelo anthony all right we talking about current day carmelo no disrespect to the legendary Melo that was averaging 25 26 30 points per game we're referring to the 2017 2018 season scoring ability i gotta get my boy maybe like a c plus b minus i mean obviously with his role this year he wasn't he wasn't the guy to score anymore you know for the first 13 years of his career he was the guy he was the number one option and then boom from he went from number one option last year in new york to the number three option in okc and because of that his numbers dropped and i guess his scoring ability in general drop i mean he went he went silent in the playoffs and that means something shooting the ball i mean give it basically the same thing because that's Melo's game he's no longer driving to the paint like that his game is the mid-range jumper face up maybe a turnaround every once in a while but his game is still is shooting the ball you feel me um playmaking ability <laughs> do y'all know how many assists carmelo had in the playoffs i think it was like two look it up in the in the in the playoff series against utah i think he had two or three assists so playmaking ability we got to give it like a d dog we got to give it a d but again that's not his role it's never been his role to be a playmaker he's a score first guy so though his playmaking may be low that's not really what he was there for defense i gotta give it like a d i'm sorry mellow and mellow mellow no you know you watching this video you're one of my guys but i gotta be real with you he was getting blown by by jay crowder a lot of that series by Jay Crowder a lot of that series and you know he's uh, even in his prime he was never really a defender but now at age 30 plus it's just a lot worse and then value to his team is a weird one because I'm pretty sure if you ask many OKC fans they want him gone 28 million dollars next year is a lot of money to give it to Melo who is decreasing so as far as value for the team D D plus Sorry I had to do it to you, Melo. You know I got number respect, number respect for you, but I got to keep it real, too. Keep it going, man. I like where we're going with this one. And we got 
Chris Stapps, poor Zangus. Okay. Now, this was definitely Chris Stapps' best year in the league, but obviously because of his injury, what was it, an ACL injury, it was cut short. I could say Chris Stapps' scoring ability is probably like an A. At 22 years old, he's one of the more unstoppable players to guard. At 7'3", he can put it on the ground, get it to the basket, or he can pull up for three. So overall scoring, I think I got to give him an A. Look at, it, look at his numbers for before his injury. The guy was scoring the ball close to at will, you know, and before he was injured, the... the um, the Knicks were close to a playoff spot, and that's decent considering how bad their team really is. You know, shooting the ball, um, if I'm giving, like, the elite of the elite, like, an AA+, plus, I think I got to get Kristaps, like, a B. I think that's pretty solid. At 7-3, he definitely, again, like I say, he can stretch the floor, score in all many different ways. So, I got to give it to him there. Uh, what was next? Playmaking. Honestly, I'm going to have to put an incomplete here because when I watch Kristaps Porzingis play, I don't think about his playmaking ability. Or maybe that means he doesn't have much playmaking ability. The fact that I don't think of it off the top of my head. I'll give it an incomplete. Or in this case, I'll keep it down in the middle with like a C. Defense, he led the league in blocks for a while this season. He definitely is a rim protector at 7-3. So I'll give him another B there. And then the importance to this team, A+. plus. He is their star player. He is their face of their franchise. They need him to be healthy. They need him to be successful for the future. So Kristaps, I think, I think that's how we rock it with you, brother. And now we got... <laughs> Anthony Davis. That's two all-stars back-to-back, but I'm cool with it. Anthony Davis. Scoring ability, there's not a singular player in this league that can stop Anthony Davis. If Anthony Davis wants to score the ball, he probably is going to score the ball. So I'm giving him an A in scoring ability. Shooting the ball-wise, I think I got to give him like a B-. minus. You know, he has improved his game to where he can hit the mid-range jumper now or even step out to the three. But again, he's still developing that. You know, it's not really, really in his game just yet. So I think a B- minus in that range will be decent. Defensively, I mean, oh, I'm sorry, playmaking ability. He's another guy like Chris Stops where I don't really think about his playmaking too much, especially since on his team he has a prime playmaker and Rajon Rondo. So... Well, Anthony Davis not look to play make. You feel me? He's there to score the ball. So I'm gonna give him another incomplete, or maybe I'll give him a C, just like I did Chris Stops. Defensively, well, he may be a candidate for defensive player of the year this year. He led the league in blocks this season, so that obviously means he's a good defender at least. So I'll give him an A minus. You know, a, a minus is not good. That's great. He's a great defender. I'll give him an A minus. If I'm giving Draymond Green an A, I'm giving. Anthony Davis an A minus. I think that's cool because he can still stick with some perimeter players if they aren't super fast. But in the paint, he's definitely dominant as far as shot blocking and importance to the team. Again, he's the face of the franchise. A plus, A plus. And I don't think they're gonna trade him, Boston. I know y'all fans. Y'all fans really want to get y'all hands on Anthony Davis, but some tell me they're not trading him for a long time. Shuffle it down here as we get Dirk again, similar to the mellow thing. We not talking prime Dirk. Prime Dirk would have got an A in scoring, an A in shooting, B minus in playmaking, defense maybe like a C minus, but importance to the team an A plus. Championship winner as the guy, you know? Again, defensively, he won that. Remember when Tyson Chandler was with him, Tyson Chandler guarded basically everybody down low. If they had a good big man, Tyson Chandler was on him. Would that, and that allowed Dirk to basically... D destroy it on offense because he didn't have to do much on defense but we talking about 40 plus year old dirt man all right scoring the ball i think he may be a solid c right now you know he average he does he still averaged double digit points which is great for a guy in his 40s um and he did start a lot of the season too so even at age 40 he is playing a role on this team the franchise that he kind of built if you want to say that shooting the ball wise he's still one of the he's still a super knockdown shooter but it just gets to the point where he's not taking as many anymore or just teams even at 40 they're guarding him at the perimeter because they know Dirk is equivalent to shooting the ball so I'll probably give that like a, a B minus maybe um playmaking oof at age 40 I, I don't think he got much in that playmaking take doll D plus um <laughs> no disrespect Defense, I mean, if he wasn't a good defender in his prime, he definitely ain't a good defender at 40. So we're going to give him a D plus. And importance to the team, his importance is different than the other importance. So at age 40, he's obviously not going to lead his team to a championship. But everything he's done for the team in this past or the city in the past, I think he's still a super important player to this team. Hell, they gave the guy a two-year contract last year when he was 40, you know. So it's obvious that they still love him. They still want him there. So I'm giving it like an A, y'all. I'm legitimately giving 40-year-old Dirk importance for this team an A because of what he did in the past and how they have respected him throughout his years. 
we gonna end it with JJ Redick. Okay. Um, this was the best year of JJ Redick's career. He averaged like 17 points per game, which is stellar, especially at his age. You don't expect a guy of his age to get better, especially since he is a specialist, you know? Um, so scoring the ball wise, honestly, I may give my man like a, a B minus. I'll give him like a B minus because he he did score the ball, you know, 17 points per game or whatever, but he's kind of He's a specialist, right? There's some things in the NBA course scoring the ball wise he just doesn't do. He gets his bread and butter from the shooting, which I gotta say, we given him an A. He is the one of the top five shooters, pure shooters in the league. And that's how he got his buckets. That's how he got all that money from, from Philly this season. Man, was it 23 million? Whoo! For one season? Whoo! For 82 games? Oh, and some playoff? Whoo! But. They were smart to sign him to that because he has never make, missed the playoffs in his career and the streak stays alive in Philly, all right? Playmaking ability, is, that, ain't, that ain't his bread and butter, so I give it like a C-. minus. Defensively, that's not his bread and butter, but I can say I said the same thing about him when he was with the Clippers. He is a good team defender. He's not going to guard a player one-on-one -on -one and really be successful, but he is a pretty good team defender, so that gives you like a C. You know, if he wasn't a good team defender, he'd be in the D range for me, honestly. Um, what was it? Defensively, we already did play. Did we do playmaking? Yeah, we did playmaking. And then importance to this team. Honestly, he was one of the more important players to this team. I know we got Joel Embiid, Ben Simmons is tied for like first importance. But honestly, he may be the third most important person on that team. That's why I'm very curious to see if they resign him and if they do resign him how much is he getting paid because he's not getting another 23 million this is not happening jj and you probably know that too so i thought he was super important for this run that they just went through and um so i'm have to give it like a b minus or so which is still pretty good it may not sound good but a b minus is pretty good and that's all we have for the video again these were all my opinions and since we were randomly drawing cards there was no preparation so i could have been wishy-washy on some of the things i said but nonetheless i hope you did enjoy what we did in this video um i don't say this often but leaving a like on the video definitely does help grow the channel and some things that YouTube was want is to help the channels grow so smash the like button if you enjoyed it and it's weird to say because I sound like a cliche YouTuber and I guess in this case I am okay um thank y'all so much we'll be back probably tomorrow because your boy been on a hot streak other than Mother's Day I was with, I was with my moms and hopefully you were too so we ain't had time to make videos but see you tomorrow